So it's time. Um, excuse the hair and the bags under the eyes and they're just generally looking totally stuffed. I am, I've been at work all day, but it was a very hectic day as you saw from the very beginning of the day. But the exciting thing happens tonight. It's like there's been two really warm days, two days with blowflies. So that to me indicates spring and spring means setting the incubator. We're gonna have babies. So uh, I've been collecting eggs in the last week, uh, week and a couple of days. The fresher the eggs, the more success you're gonna have. Now, I also know that the chickens have been very active. Um, the boy chicken is very excited with the girl chickens. So these, this lot is going to be a mixed lot. Um, the only ones that are gonna be pure are the Barnavelders, cause they're on their own. But the rest are going to be Australor, Brahma, Buffalpington, Cross, Isa, whatever, because they're all still in together. That is why I'm making a big rush to get the chicken pen done from, you know, so that I can separate them and start doing purebreds. This is just going to be, um, yeah, just for just for fun and just to show you guys. So um, it's setting, I set up in my laundry. Look, it's a bit like calf bottles and cleaning stuff and all that sort of stuff, but it's up high, out of the way, it can't be messed with. I filled the water reservoir back there and this is the best incubator. So I'm gonna set it up and show you guys when I turn it on and have a bit of a chat about it. Um, but yeah, in 21, 18 to 21 days, we're gonna have baby chickens. So what are we doing here, Mills? I'm trying to pick out all the ones that for me, look very much like um, Australorp eggs, so. Looks very much to me like a big omelette here. Oh gosh, don't say that, let's hope. Now, I'm not gonna clean the eggs if they're not super dirty, but if they are like super dirty like this, I've got. So why don't we clean the eggs? Well, we do generally. No, but why? If, What's the best, uh, the best reason person? you don't, if you can get away with it, if mm. they're clean, is because they have a protective layer on them. I like them as natural as possible. Plus, you don't want them being moved around a lot. No. That's a barn of elder. See all the speckles? Yeah, it's beautiful. Now, there's so it's a got bit layers, of... isn't it? It's like an onion, isn't it, babe? Well, no, it's just got a protective layer on the outside. Um, so, if we can not remove that, that's that's good but if we we don't want anything going into the incubator that's gonna after 21 days be rotten and smelly and gross so that's where we would all right so I'm gonna leave that day five that's looks like a two probably to you guys but it's day five of our incubation everything's going well there's no smell coming from the incubator which means that the eggs are all good none of them are rotten which is great we we're pretty sure of that anyway because we um, tested them all. I smelled them all before I put them in because you can kind of smell a bad egg before you go in. I, and I have something else exciting. So up here, I purchased some wine dot eggs. So there's gold laced, silver laced, and blue laced wine dot eggs in here. So it's a mix. I'm going to do a wine dot pen as well because they're a beautiful chicken. Um, and according to a really good friend of mine. Even if you've got them mixed, they never come out like mixed. So a gold and silver doesn't come out as half gold, half silver or any of that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna just trial it. I love that sort of thing. Uh, we've also got down here a ton. There's all the duck eggs. We're gonna actually separate mama duck off and let her have her eggs back. And these are all chicken eggs. Uh, we'll probably eat this lot down here because um, there's still quite a few days to go here and I like to put as fresh as anything eggs in there. So, um, yeah, I'm building up my Buff Orpington flock as well. So, um, cause I've only got two hens and one rooster from the ones, one place. I like to add extra genetics in. So we've got like nice, strong genetics, but yeah, we're going to keep you updated on the progress as the incubator goes down and when they start hatching, it's pretty exciting. Exciting. We're on day eight. That's about to switch over to nine very soon. So within just under 10 days, we're going to have our first hatchings happening in this incubator. And like I've explained before, these guys are, except for the um, 
barn of elders. I finally remembered. Except for the barn of elders, they're pure. Everything else has all been together um, until this week we are going to separate them. We're going to leave them three weeks, uh, collect the eggs and eat them, obviously. Um, and then after the three weeks, we know that they'll be purebred out of there because we know that semen um, lasts about three weeks in the hen. So we can't guarantee anything. Sorry about the noise. They're cleaning and music and all that. So I just want to give go back in and do another quick update. Everyone's turning around and all that. But uh, more exciting news is tomorrow, um, I've purchased another one of these because I've decided that obviously we've got way too many eggs going on. There's more down here. Um, so we're going to have them next to each other and we're going to run them. Um, yeah, and just get as many chickens as we can. I know that people are really getting into keeping chickens and things. Those, those cartons there are freshly collected eggs from gold silver and blue laced wine dots um so they're going to go in the incubator tomorrow i'm going to i'm going to show you guys that one as well but we're going to sort out this shelf so that it's level with these little these legs here so that we can have the incubators next to each other i really love having it up high and out of the way so no little fingers are tempted to touch and push buttons and open doors and all that the best thing about this incubator i'm just going to shut this up a tiny bit so you don't have to hear that noise. It's pretty bad, eh? Mommy. Um, so the best thing about this type of incubator is that it does everything for you. If you have a look here, it's got a little chicken. So the mode button actually, you can pick chicken, goose, duck, turkey. There's a few different things that you can pick. Oh, and quail. So you, it has different settings and it does everything automatically. So if you look back here, this is the water reservoir. Old type incubators, you would have to fill the water up inside the incubator, whereas this one, you don't even open the door, meaning you don't change its um, temperature, you don't change its humidity, any of that stuff. So it is brilliant. I have bought another one of those and Hunt and Gather are coming tomorrow and they're gonna bring it up for me because I don't have a car, as you guys know. Still waiting for the alternator to come in and for Alex to fix it. Um, so yeah, I'm stuck on the farm set. We're going to sort out my spring garden beds. Um, yeah, we're just going to have some fun in the sun. It's a beautiful sunny day today. So, um, but yeah, this, this video is about chickens and incubating. So I thought I'd do an update. Um, this is going to switch over to nine today at some point, but yeah, it's good. It tells you everything on the front. Um, it's super easy to use. It's very easy to clean, way better. It's got that big, beautiful door there. So the old type of incubators that I used to use, the Janowells and all those sort of, in my opinion, they're rubbish. But that's what we had to deal with, right? So um, they used to have to look, you know, through little gaps and try and see everything. Whereas when the chickens hatch in there, you can see everything very clearly. It's amazing. Um, I will give you some more information on that when I set up the other one next door to it. But yeah, there's your update. All right, so I'm here setting my second incubator because this crazy person, I'm not no, crazy. beautiful friend of mine, did some errands for me this morning because I have no car and she was again. so kind to offer. Yeah, again, <clears throat> this time it's the alternator, we think. We think, we're not sure. Let's all fix it. But I don't care about that kind of stuff because I've got eggs to incubate. So check this. So blue laced, silver laced and gold laced wine dots from different places. So I have these two cartons over here that are not, well, nearly two cartons that are not marked are from a good friend of mine, Ria. And the rest here I bought for $50 a carton. I know that's very steep but it'll be worth it and it will pay off dividends. So, the, and I wanted to mix genetics. I want, I don't want just all one lot. So I'm gonna make sure these go in first and hopefully these all fit. Um, we'll see how we go. I got them all in, but only just, that's every single egg that you guys saw in the carton. So I'm going to have to reach around the back here. The other thing I have done is fill up this back reservoir take 10 um no so we had a bit of a drama 
These double adapters from Bunnings are rubbish. Don't bother with them. We've got a really old school one there. Right, so all we have to do with these awesome incubators is press the mode button until the chicken comes up. If I was doing ducks, I would go duck, goose, all small birds. So if you were hatching pigeons or quail or anything like that, you'd pick that setting and it would set everything exactly how you need for those eggs to hatch. Now that is if you want to self-program something in. So for example, if you had something really obscure like an ostrich egg or an emu egg or something that needed really different parameters, then that's what you would use. But how good is that? So that one is going to be 18 days until they start hatching. This one's only got about eight days left. So what I'll do when we get to like day 17 I'll pull these baskets down and, and I'll take all the eggs off the rollers. One basket will go on the very bottom down here and the next one will go up there and then that water tray will go up the top there and be full of water just to add extra humidity to the air to help with them hatching. Uh, and then the same goes with that. Now uh, you can leave your chicks in there for up to 48 hours without any dramas. They don't need food or water. It's totally fine. Uh, if you look at things like in, in the US, hatcheries and that will send them in the post and sometimes they're three, four days out before they even get a feed or a drink, um, which I don't advocate obviously, but uh, 48 hours is definitely fine. Um, and then they go into the brood box, which I'll show you guys soon. And that has apple cider vinegar, honey, and water. And sometimes I put garlic in there as well. Um, not always, um, but I've never had it fail. I also don't use the medicated chick starter. I think it's rubbish. And every time I've done it, the babies have just been weaker and not very um, healthy at all. And they die a lot easier. They get all the poop sort of sticks to their butt and they don't look very healthy. So that stage though I will be showing you guys uh, but for now we're just gonna wait and watch and I'm gonna send this beautiful lady from hunt and gather home with lots of because I can't incubate those anyway uh, they've been collected in the last three or four days but by the time these incubators are ready those eggs will be too old to be starting I mean really do it but your success rate goes lower and lower so yeah, why not share with another fellow homesteader and bless them with some extra abundance. So I'll keep you guys updated when we start having chicks hatch. We're gonna film that for you guys too. Excuse the washing machine in the background. As you guys know, I've got this in my laundry and I wanted to catch this to go show you guys what this incubator does. So right here where you can see these bars, when it's done a rotation, which is what that little circle is there, um, the bars are full again and it counts down. I think it's every hour it turns. So I'm trying to catch it, actually turn and show you guys how it works. Basically these rollers here, they roll and the eggs move just like what a mum chook would do. She gets in the nest and turns them. Um, it stops the chick attaching or fusing to the side of the egg sac inside the egg so it makes hatching a lot easier for them um, now if you look back in the video just before you'll see that I had a big red there was a big red stop cross there see that stop it was bright red now apparently at some point I or one of the kids have pressed the stop button and I didn't realize why these eggs weren't turning now we're on day 11 I hope that doesn't affect anything I'm pretty sure it won't. I know there are incubators that don't turn and they still work, but I've made sure I've turned that off now so that it is rotating and that's why it's counting down now. So you'll see here that this one is about to turn. So when it starts turning, this will go, I'm pretty sure I remember it being blue and it will rotate and rotate all the eggs. Um, and you'll see here up the top, I've got these baskets. These baskets here 
when it comes closer to time I will be adding in paper towel on the bottom and then all the eggs go into these two baskets and one goes at the bottom and one goes to the next layer up this water tray goes up to the top here full of water to add a little bit more humidity into the incubator for hatching uh, and so that's how we found the best results with these incubators um, this one here its functions have you can turn the light on and off which is really cool for when you want to watch them hatch and all that sort of stuff it's really brilliant this package comes with a candling torch as well so when you're wanting to check your eggs to see if there is any fertile ones in there this comes with it yeah it's really cool There you have it guys, it did its little turn and the counter went back up to full. I'm pretty sure that's an hour's worth if you look at the second one here, we've got it counting down here. It's pretty cool, it's not that much that goes on really, it just rolls the eggs around as you saw. I've got the Barnevelders in there. Australorps in there, Buff Orpington's in there, and the turkey egg nest was moved to in the back right hand corner of there. Pause what? Ready? Turn around. Noah, don't get oh, there. We go. Stop. You're behind the bush, Jax. I can't see you. All right. Hey, it's, God. It's a special time, right? Everyone else is asleep. It's late at night. I have work tomorrow and Friday, and I have a very dear friend pass away, so I have a funeral, which I do not like. Um, I hate saying goodbye to beautiful people. Um, aside from that, I have work the entire next four days, and these guys are on day 17. So it means that tomorrow and the next four days until we hit day 21 pretty well, these beautiful things are going to be hatching, which is super exciting, but it means that we now need to do something a little bit different. Is there any peep holes yet? Not yet. So what I've done is I just line the inside of the baskets oh. with a bit of paper towel. When eggs start cracking and you get eggshell and stuff like that, you really do want a, a bit of paper Paper towel, paper, towel. paper towel in here because it collects all the eggshell and stops any waste getting into your incubator, making it easier for cleaning. And yes, let's Brocco, can you fill that up with water? Because we might sure that the paper towel is sort of up the sides and stuff. You don't need to wet. Um, you can wet it. Actually, let's hang on. No, don't worry about the sprays. Let's spray the eggs when we put them in there. So now at this stage of hatching, what is crucial is their um, humidity and the temperature so we want it we want it to be kind of wet so I always do this now this is going to stop their little tiny feet coming through or anything like that give it a bit of a wet dampen down well, I'm just gonna spray. well because you're going to spray the eggs honey all right so we're going to just tip that around get it all going Okay, Brock, Brock, that's enough, buddy. That's enough. You don't need any more spraying. So I've got myself a bottle of water here. Brock's got a spray bottle with water because the name of the game here right now is we need it damp. So as quick as we possibly can, because we don't want this temperature going down too much, Brock and I are going to fill two baskets with the eggs. They're dropping in. Absolutely, that's essential. So we are going to fill these two baskets and we're going to put the two baskets of eggs there. Bottom and second shelf. Then we're going to put this one at the top with water in it so we add extra liquid and extra humidity. Let's go, Brock. All right, how are we doing this? Come around this side. Come on, come on. Ready? Bottom shelf first. Oh, oh they're pretty heavy. 
Yep, there's lots of babies in there, I'd imagine. Now, we haven't candled this lot. Little nuggies. We've just let these naturally go. Wow, that one is heavy. I'm going to give it a go right now. We don't need to candle, darling, because we've got the light on in here, so we won't see anything. Can we give it a go? We are going to win this lot. So tomorrow, if you like, tomorrow night, we're going to candle some so that everyone can see exactly how it goes. Why don't we candle some tomorrow? Let me shut that up. Please put the candle down, love. Put the candle down, please. Let's get the eggs in first. Oh, up top. Get them all in. No, no, because we've got another basket to do, lovey. Oh, yeah, so let's get them in. Nearly, 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 nearly. Yeah, like I said to everyone recently, I'm quite sure that these spotted ones here don't turn into babies. Let's hope I'm wrong, because that there is a Buff Orpington, and I'd really love a few more of those. We love them. What are these? These are Barneys. Barn of Elders, yeah. yeah. Now they're purebred, so if they pop out, we're very excited. Pure right, that's enough for that basket. Let's keep that out. Pop that in the bottom. Could you moisture the uh, another paper towel on top? Another paper towel on top. I don't want to hinder the, their um, hatching in any way, shape or form. So I won't. Do we need another basket? Because there's one No, in. darling. We don't need another basket. The roller's going. We need to fit them all in, Brocco, as quick as we can. We're going to put this in the top here, guys. A bit of water. Oh, I'm going to spray the eggs down. Yep, you spray the eggs. I'll put the water in. Now, we want to try and fill this tray up as much as we can without having any dramas of it overflowing. Yep, do you want me to pull the tray out so you can spray a bit longer? Okay, ready? And go. Yep. Oh, you can hear them. I can hear them. I wish, I wish you guys could hear. Yep, that's good. And then away we go. We close this. Right. And now, check this out, Noah. Yep. We're going to press the stop button. Right? And we're going to hold our finger on it. That stops the rotating of the tray. So we're not going to have this tray, these these rollers moving anymore now we're literally relying on humidity and temperature what if, some get stuck in egg? Yeah. if any get, well that we've prevented that now it's as humid as it can be and as damp as it can be and we're leaving them alone now what can happen excellent question brock if we open this door too often as soon as this door opens and the air from outside here the ambient air gets in here there's a layer on the inside of that shell and it shrink wraps over the baby. So that baby can no longer hatch. Or breathe. Or breathe, right? So that is why, as much as we possibly can, we do not open the incubator. Um, if we do happen to do it and there's someone trying to hatch, you can see immediately that that little baby has had that, that outside layer or membrane has gone and sucked in over him. He can no longer breathe, him or her. We hope they're hers. But that's why we've added lots of a moisture. A couple of hymns too for the freezer. Yep, well they will be meat birds, won't they? But as much humidity, as much moisture as we can possibly add. All right, we're going to candle. I want you to open. And quick, shut. No, open and grab one. All right, grab one there. Yep, these are from my beautiful Aww. friend Ria. Pop it in my hand. Now I want you to shine the torch up through nothing. it. Nothing. There is nothing in that egg. Now, what we would see if that was fertilized... We'll find one that is. It's all right. We will find one. But what you'll see if that was fertilized is veins and a little tiny bird forming. So we're going to keep this one out. There's no point in putting eggs back in the incubator that are not fertilized. There you go. Veins. Can you see the veins in there, guys? Can I see? I haven't seen yet. We hope to see pulsating in that. Uh, I no, but... Sometimes if we mess with it too much, we can actually stop the incubation happening. And that's why we don't open the incubator as Unless often as... Because we, it... well, we used yep, to open pop it... that in. Grab, grab another one. We used to open it every, like, day just to check on the things, but not... There we go. There's a chicken in there and it's pulsating. Look at that. <coughs> There's definitely a baby in that. I don't know if it's... It's probably... Far oh, yep. Yeah, I can see it pulsating. You guys, can you see all the veins moving? You can even see the chicken moving, guys. Look at that. It's responding to the light. Wow. Isn't that amazing? I like what the chick will be looking at right now. 
Oh, it's seeing the red light. It's probably the first time it's seeing light, to be honest, unless it's daylight. And you know how chickens are active. Look at that, so moving around. Isn't that Can perfect? Moving, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'll put them back and I'll stop harassing Hang them. Hang on. Hold it very carefully. There's a baby in there. Hold it very carefully. Oh, and grab me another that? couple. Can you get them from Ria's lot, darling, at the bottom? These two. Yeah. Now hold your hand around one to keep it warm. Let me have the other. All right, now. Nothing in that? Not yet? Yeah, there is. Definitely something in that. That one's quite advanced. So I think that one started growing from day one. And if I turn the egg, I wonder if you can see all those veins and stuff. It's definitely moving. Look at that. So I turn it a little bit. It's a bit of a trick I've done for years. All right, you turn the egg on its side and you can see that end that it's still got to grow into and that really dark end. That's quite a decent sized chicken there. Do you want to pop that one away and pop the other one on top? Okay, another, another infertile egg. And you know what? See the spots? Yeah. I just call them moon spots because it looks like a moon, right? But every time I've ever seen an egg with those spots, I never see a baby inside it. So oh. Look at him go. He's, He's like swaying. <laughs> He's Can dizzy. Can That's a baby. Oh, pulled me out. That's a baby. And then soon you'll see a little line come out of across the egg. And that happens to be one of those eggs that's got the dots, so oh, I may be wrong. It's gone all the way back. Let's see. Yeah, look at it go. Some more here. I'll put her back. That, my friends, is the perfect example of an egg with a baby moving. The look at the, the veins. There's another one here. The moving chicken. Look at that. Yeah, I know. He does not like that. He does like that. So, wow, Look I can that. see. Isn't that beautiful? We have three babies so far, and they're little, uh, it looks like two blue and a black Australop. What? Little update. Oh, he's cracking. It's cracking all over the place. Now the little newborn just done. And a couple of fluffies. That can't get me awake. The cheeping. A happy sound. Come on, little one. Don't do it. Pack away. Hold your breath. And these are all Australop babies. They're all hatching very, very quickly now. Probably two every hour or so, which is excellent. It's more pipping down the bottom. I have opened the door, full disclosure, just to remove some empty eggshells so they've got space to sit in the baskets because it's quite cramped in there. Okay, it's been 24 hours now since our first chicken hatched. So we've got a, quite a lot. What would you say, about 20 chickens in there? So we have decided we are going to set up their little brooding area and we're going to show you guys the what we use and we're going to explain why. So here to help me today because we had a very big loss yesterday and these guys needed some time to grieve. So we thought we'd keep them home from school and let them um, have some fun setting up for the new baby chickens. So, hi Grace. Hi. Hi Jack. Now, do you want to show us how we set up our brooder? What are we using? What's this we, thing? We're um, using a guinea pig cage. Yep, so let's start with the first bit. What do we put on the bottom of the cage for we them? We put shredded paper to keep them nice and cozy. But also, it, it absorbs all the poop moisture. And what else do we, what do we do with it once we're finished with the paper? We put it in the 
the garden. Yeah. Put it in the garden. Yeah. So we use it all all the areas we use it in. It is a rainy, yucky day today. Oh, all of it? Yeah. Do you reckon? Yeah. Do you start a vinegar? A and little splush. And, and honey. some honey. So this is raw honey from our bees, yeah. not processed or anything. And show me the vinegar, please, darling. This is apple cider vinegar, right, with the mother. So it's fermented, so it's actually good for them. Now, when we've made up the water, where do we put it, Jax? We put it on a brick so, on they, brick so they don't drown. I was about to drink. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> um, no, we put it on a brick to get it up out of the paper so the paper doesn't fill up in here. And a couple of things I do want to say is we've been using these bottles for a, no, a bit more than that, darling. A little bit more, a little splush. Yep, that's enough. Now, apple cider vinegar and honey, and sometimes we use garlic as well. I think in the second one we'll put garlic. Um, is like a little bit of a tonic to help you know like a medication um to get them strong and stuff do you want to pop that down over there strong but what i wanted to say was we've been using these for a long time but you can't tell they look brand new mm. every time we do chicks we give it a good wash in soapy water so that there's no risk of any uh you know germs or bacteria or anything like yeah. that and also is the honey dissolved no not yet Please. Just keep stir it in until the honey's dissolved and we do that to keep everything as clean as we possibly can don't we guys um we're using now, what's in that jug no jackson keep that in there so that all the honey can wash off hot water so it can hot water are they good yeah hot water so it can condense. hot water so no so that it can dissolve the honey a little bit more Rock's going to light the fire. Now, we're setting this up inside because in this kind of weather, I'll show you out my window, rainy, stormy, yucky weather, blowing a gale. Mum, yes, do we put it all in or not? Nah? We are going to fill it up. Is the honey off there yet? Yes. So, all the way to the top. The best thing to do when you're filling it to the top is pop it on the ground even. Um, off camera, we just set up. And it's all up and going. So we used a straw. Well, we we've up. we've rigged something up with an old coat hanger right. to have it hang a bit lower than what. See? And it than, heats up. But disclaimer. We are going to go get the chickens after when show so we've put the water in the centre. Yes. And when we put them in, we're gonna dip their beak so they know that's where the water is. So everyone gets their beak dipped so they can taste that that's the water. Mom, then they are get... they going to like hold in for a long time? No, just dip just it and dip. let them go. We've put food over there and food over there, right? And you can turn the heat light on now, Jaxie. And that's going to stay like that. Now, it's a red globe because at night time it doesn't disturb their sleep patterns night from day. So when everyone's asleep in this house, so will the chickens be even though there's a heat light on. We've got them inside because we're at the farm and we've noticed a lot of rats and a lot of mice and we're concerned that they might get into the cage and eat the chicks. So we'll wait until they're of a big enough size to actually put them out. But also we want to be sure we've we've had it. We were just setting up to make sure that there's no error possible because we've had a lot of loss lately and we just want to make sure that everyone's good to go. Plus it'd be nice to have the little sheep of little chickens and be able to watch them do their thing. It's good fun. Um, yeah. One of the grey ones. Like you, darling, ones. you can absolutely. Yay. We're going to open this. Oh, this chicken's a little bit disabled. All right. Please there. Speak. Ready? <laughs> He's missing an eye. Be careful. No, Mum, is that up? Start grabbing them and putting them in. Oh. What's that guy's leg? You're my baby. Quick as you can, quick as you can, quick as you can. That's it. Well, there's one dried up in there. Yeah, I know. Is That's... it still alive? No. Yeah, it is, it is. A girl. So we'll do what we did last night. It's still alive. A girl. Please put them in, darling. It's, this is a thing we've got to move quickly with. I'm trying to. Good job, guys. Look at this one. Excellent. 
Oh, quick, quick, yeah we're, yeah, we're doing it. This one's a bit disabled, Mum. Yeah, I know, darling. Sometimes that happens. That's a, that's because that is oh, an no, Isa this Brown. Is the one we said last night. Yeah, this is an Isa Brown cross. So I'm going oh, to yeah. hang on to that and keep it warm. And there's the reason I got this. this soft. Oh, and that one, and that one. Yep. And that one. Here. I don't know if that one's still alive, sweetie. Yeah, that one's dead. Aww, okay, well, it's all right. Here. So start getting him dead. Mom, all right, any more eggs hatching? That is what you get when. Um, so now. I'd put that in just in case. I'm going to, but what I want to do is only put one tray in. Come here, sweetie. Come down there. Oh, 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 head, head up. Head, mum. All right, little ones. Okay, okay. More chicks. There's a brand newie there, too. Yeah. Gently, gentle, gentle, gentle. This one's still stuck. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, this one is. Still stuck in his egg. Here we go. Right, and we've got a little one hatching here. Oh, Mum, this one's being scorched. Hold that. There's one there. Is that hatching out? Yeah. Mummy, could we Still go? moving? Yep. We're going to have to help these out of the egg. Yep. We can, Grace. Go? Hang on. Empty shells. Can't hold no. Empty shells. No, that's got egg, something in it. Has it? Empty shells. So now what we're going to do, guys, we give these guys a bit more time. See that? Started pipping, but the door gets open, so it gets sealed on. Nice Same with egg. here. Grace, hop down from the chair, please, my love. Sorry, could I go for the Yep, them? take those chips. Okay. And remember to dip their feet. Now, what we're going to do? No, I'll wait. Yeah, you just wait. <laughs> That'll be okay. Jacko, you just wait for mum, alright? I know what to do, I did it last night. Alrighty. Alrighty, we'll get this sorted and then we'll go down and release these new chickens down there and I'll get a bit of we'll get a bit of footage of um these getting peeled. Oh. She's pouring down outside. So what are you doing there, Gracie? Dipping their beaks? Dipping this one's beak, the others are going to show it. Aww. Is he wet, wet? The one, the one we saved, can that one be mine? Because yeah. we saved it. Yeah. Each one get that one, goes in. Everyone except the two little ones we brought in. Yes. It's okay, because those two, when they're dried off and stuff, we'll show them as well, but they will learn from the other chickens. 
they might not survive also. Yeah, they, they might, might not, not, but their chances are very high, Brock, that they will survive. Yeah, that one over there near the food, that one's going to survive yeah, I mean, for sure. Yeah. I'm not sure about that one there. No, Bro, that dad. one's parkour in that. <laughs> that one's mine. And that one right there, mine. It's mine. Not scrambled, but where is he? Right there. With the weird face. It looks like his face is wet, but it's not. That one there. Yeah, boy. Oh, no, 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 I checked on the map yesterday of where we're launching from right now and how far we have to go. It looks far on the map, but from, from looking in person, standing on, on opposite land and looking at the island, apparently. Um, and look at everyone who can see. Adventure. This little one here was born a bit messed up. It's got one eye, one eye missing. Crooked beak. Uh, this is an nicer brown cross. So it's proof of how bad um, the breeding and crossbreeding of Isa Browns is. That's an Isa Brown. Yeah, that's why it's yellow. Oh. So put it near the food. But generally, because they don't have two eyes, they don't make it. But we're going to give it the best chance we can. Is it how, how, how much percentage of no. survival? Very low. Have you seen um, according to the... I imagine it running.